What's going on, FA Nation? John Pembe here with James Grande. Welcome into the Fantasy Alarm NBA DFS podcast and live stream recording here for Tuesday's four game main slate. James, nice little uh, small slate here on Tuesday. Tuesdays and Thursdays tend to be the shorter slates of the week. And a seven gamer on Monday. We got full slates coming Wednesday and Friday here. So, but though this is a small slate, it again is not low on Kyrie Irving, Steph Curry, Shai Gilgis Alexander, Devin Booker are all on this slate. Kevin Durant, obviously, on this slate as well. You know, so there's a lot of upside potential here. I guess we'll have to see if any of these nets will sit. Ben Simmons obviously sat Monday, the first leg of the back to back here. For Brooklyn, you know, at times we've seen Kyrie or Durant sit certain legs of back-to-back, so that will be something to certainly pay attention to here. But all in all, not a bad full gamer. Yeah, definitely riddled with stars. The note on Simmons during, like, his whole, like, oh, he might sit on, because the knee soreness on Monday, was that he was probably going to play Tuesday. That was the report. We'll see if that is the case. Mm -hmm. They look pretty good without him, so we'll see if they're like, you know what, Ben, stay on another game. But also, Brooklyn... It'll be interesting to see if they play Joe Harris on a back-to-back. We'll see Seth Curry, likely, because he played the other day, sat out Monday for the back-to-back. So we'll see Seth Curry probably extended. So that game's interesting in general, because on the other side, we don't know who's playing for the Bulls. Right. Levine's questionable. DeSunmo is questionable. Kobe White is questionable. Drummond's already out. So there's a lot of question marks in Chicago, too. So that game in general is just like who is playing and that's why there's that's the only game without a total right now 226 and a half in golden state miami golden state dropped two games in a row that they shouldn't have lost right and now they have to go to miami that's tough and then minnesota phoenix 228 and a half that's a slate high phoenix five point favorites at home did you see cole anthony big time injury yeah oblique tear but we could see the return of Jalen Suggs. I saw that. So. I saw that Suggs could be you know, a good matchup there, I think, for Fantasy Orlando versus mm-hmm. OKC, SGA. We'll just get into it. We'll talk about the point guards here. He's at 94. Steph Curry's at 96. And Kyrie Irving's at 97. I mean, not a big price difference between the top three guys. All of them have been playing really well. Kyrie, again, is on pace for 50-plus fantasy points tonight. Curry, 49 fantasy points the other night, but 57 against Shane in that overtime game against them. Miami's a tougher matchup, you know, so but yep. you know, so maybe not necessarily expecting a ceiling game out of him there. But then you have SGA against Orlando, and he's coming off a 60 fantasy point game. 60 plus fantasy points now in two of the last three games for him. <laughs> so this man just he just gets after it. He just gets after it. So potentially he maybe the highest rostered chalk of the slate or highest price chalk of the slate would be SGA on this one. Maybe the highest owned like expensive play. Sure. Maybe not like because I'm sure there'll be a value option. I mean, no Aiton, maybe no Simmons, right? So there's gonna be like value. Maybe the highest owned expensive play. Sure. Of the slate. I mean, they've also won three in a row, so like they're being competitive. That Dallas game, I don't Giddy know if you saw that Dallas game too. Already ruled out though. Already yeah, Josh Giddey's yeah, already rolled out. Yeah. SGA, they were down like 16 with two minutes left or something in that Dallas game, John. Literally sh- never should have won that game. And then they <laughs> took it to overtime, came back, and it was all in SGA well, taking shot, over. Dude, the shot attempts are what's wild, right? 20 plus shot attempts every night. He's shooting 50% from the floor. Yep. Like, yep. the guy He's is got getting... the DeMar DeRozan. It's the DeMar DeRozan. He's not taking threes. He's well, just getting to the bucket, and he's taking mid-range jump shots. When he is shooting threes, he's at least making them, right? Like, yep. he's not a total DeMar DeRozan who took, like, 0.5 per season. Like, Fair. he's taking two to three, <laughs> and then he's hitting them also. So, like, he's also perfect from the free throw line. He's yet to miss a free throw this season. So... Yeah, he's amazing. <laughs> also, I would... I am... I think you and I are both in agreement here. Like Kyrie is on a different planet right now. Yeah. So I think I would have no problem going there. Obviously Curry's the oddball out, even though he's been really good lately, especially with the scoring, but he's definitely the oddball out against Miami. I have no problem getting to Kyrie if you don't want to play SGA yep. or if you want to just try or if you want to try to fit him ball. Yeah. We just saw this match a couple nights ago. He had, he did have 59 in that game against Miami. 33, seven and nine in that game. So. I mean, he's not dude, like, they yeah, were like, on the road this time, so that's obviously something maybe to consider. There's never, it's again, we talked about this, we talk about this like every slate. There's never going to be a time where we're just like, don't right. play Steph Curry, it's a bad play. It's not, because he can beat anybody. He could dominate anybody. It's just, SGA is in a better spot in a coming off incredible performance after incredible performance. So it's such Kyrie's a crazy also, usage rate for him, right? Like, yeah, yeah. And Kyrie's been as good as he's been in the last, I don't know how many years. Like, yeah. So, again, not telling you not to play Curry. He's going to be the lowest owned of the three, but I think you and I both agree SGA, Irving, Curry, if we're ranking them. Sure. 
on a small slate like this, I don't mind Chris Paul. He's had some decent yep. games lately. He started off slow. You know, pick, picked it up, though. Obviously, the opening night, just 25 fantasy points. But a couple of 40-point games in there now. A couple of mid-30s there. So, a small slate, again, feels pretty... Not that we like to play cash games in small slates, but he would certainly be a cash game consideration. Sure. I can never get Kyle Lowry correct. I mean, I don't know. I, I played him I played him against that Toronto game. He had 14 points. I took the over on his point prop, prop of 12 and a half against Golden State. He only had 12. So, I mean, <laughs> most of this is obviously betting side of things. I've taken this point prop three times now. It was missed twice. I hit the over against Sacramento. The other. What are your thoughts here? Over 30 plus fantasy points in three straight games for him now. Yeah, man, I like it. And the minutes are great too. And in these competitive settings, they've been tremendous. They're just not a deep team that is going through like injuries like right. Victor, Victor Oladipo was injured Caleb Martin was suspended Yurt Seven still hasn't played like reliant upon Kyle Lowry I think 61 is a really good price Golden State 22nd or 23rd rather in defensive rating I don't think we've seen them this bad defensively in a while yeah. they're also Golden State is also second in pace so like I think like the best combination for me of like when I want to attack somebody is like bad defense fast paced team like check check right? right like checkmate on both those situations so yeah I'm, I'm okay going kyle lowry all formats i think 6100 you're gonna get him at low ownership like we typically do like you said it's hard to get kyle lowry right but with 30 plus fantasy points extremely consistently yep again small slate so there's not a ton of value i would play jalen suggs if he's active i'm fine with that at 5900 jalen noel finally had a bad game only played 10 minutes against san antonio there despite the blowout any thoughts on that like why did all of a sudden he just drop off you know he, again only one foul didn't have any turnovers just two points 10 minutes one for eight shooting i mean i think that may be just the kiss of the like kiss of death like you go one for eight as a score like especially coming off the bench, like you're not going to see time. Like you're going to, they're also talking about the return of Kyle Anderson. Yeah. He only played here. 12 minutes in that game though. But is Anderson, I think I saw a status note on Anderson that he's questionable again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the 12 minutes that weren't there before were all going to Noel. And it's not like Noel was playing 30 minutes, like 22 minutes, right? Like those 12 minutes shift over from yeah, Noel. I guess. I mean, on opening night, they both played 20 minutes. That's fair. I, guess I, don't, I, mean, I, I think, don't know where it went. I think it's I think it's you live and you die with Jalen Noel. If he's scoring, he's gonna stay on the floor. And if he's not, right? Sure. Like it's going to be a tough thing to battle back from. I'm not gonna play him at five K if now we're dealing with like other guys cutting into his They into gave Bryn Ford like, nineteen minutes in that game and he went one for six, so I don't know. Yeah. Just a weird a, rotation a weird rotation i guess what do you make of ty jerome lately cutting into the into the on our rotation there not that we're gonna play him just pointing out the fact that now he's like playing 15 minutes a night off their bench i don't really know i mean we've seen him actually kind of be good in years past with sure. the thunder and stuff so if i don't know if everybody's out you like caruso though obviously at 40 he probably he has been good this year he was really good just last today. game yeah 35 minutes yeah he was really good last game but like you said there literally might be nobody else if available. they have no other guards right Dragic, yeah that was gonna be my second option like if they're all out if the bulls go into this game with no io no kobe white no lonzo ball no zach levine their three guards will be caruso Dragic, and Daylon terry who they took in the first round of this past year's draft yeah that will be their that will be the Dude, guard rotation the dragon had some good moments last the year dragon had some good moments for the bulls yeah. so far He's, like, in their rotation to begin with. Like, he's super gray. Like, he has very gray hair and whatever. But, like, yeah, you know, yeah. I got no problems. I got no problems going there. That works for me. All right, shooting guy, Devin Booker's at 9K. Guy continues just to be on another one here. 30 yep. actual again against Houston the other night. Super safe. 40 fantasy points. You can. That's fine. You can go there. Anthony Edwards, hit or miss. He had a slow start to the game the other day, but picked it up a bit. 35 fantasy points for him there. Probably too expensive at his current price for the production we're getting. You know, he popped off for 50 twice, but he sat in the, you know, the 30s else otherwise. So maybe a little bit of a of too, being too expensive for Anthony Edwards. Maybe a contrarian play. Just uh, tournaments. For tournaments. Anthony Edwards there. Yeah, for sure. Hero struggled in this matchup, but then followed it up with 34 actual against Sacramento. So tournament play for him there as well. Be I believe, okay. man. Two guards on, on DraftKings, at least. You might, just, you might just be playing Booker because who else are you playing? I actually might be okay with Hero and Cash. Just like, he's only had like one bad game really against Golden State. I'm also like not one to like 
look into like a matchup and be like, I'm not playing this guy this time because he was really bad last time. Sure. Um, I think more so is for me, it's just that it isn't, you know, I guess you're right. They haven't been great defensively, but they, historically speaking, Historically, they've been good. They're they've right. been a good defensive team. Again, I don't really love a lot of shooting guards, at least on DraftKings as I'm looking at it. You know, Clay should be back for this one. You know, it might just be a plug and play with Booker because positionally, he'll give you such an advantage over everybody else. I don't know if there's someone that I'm missing that you like, but I'm willing to discuss it, obviously. I mean, like, I don't know if they're like must plays. I kind of agree with you. Like Jordan Poole is in play for tournaments always. Clay is really cheap and we did see him go over 30 minutes. Like that's something to at yeah. least you I know, guess hang I, our I head guess I on. have one. I forgot that Jalen Williams came back and we were big on Jalen Williams yeah. during the preseason. 27 minutes for Jalen Williams in that game against Dallas. 13 points, 3, rebounds, three assists, a block, 4 steals, 30 fantasy points. Is that repeatable? I don't know. It's a lot of defensive numbers. But, <laughs> it's a lot of big numbers defensively. Uh, yeah. yeah, he is a scorer. You know, like there's there was a lot of excitement around him. He was their first round pick this year. So, you know, if Giddy's out again and Jalen Williams, we know is going to play a role off the bench. And if it's this kind of role, you know, if they play him over Man, because I think Man only played 14 minutes in that game, or they play him over Wiggins, like I would give Jalen Williams a serious look at 3900. Yeah, I think that's a great call, John. So Trey Man did play. 26 minutes 20, 14 was, fantasy points that's what it was yeah yeah he was bad and i think it's worth mentioning like this what are the thunder are going to be a bad team i know they've won three in a row but like they're going to be a bad team they're going to develop their players they're going to see what they have when they you know inevitably have Wimbayama and chet holmgren in their lineup <laughs> right. for next year along uh, with oh, sga a freakishly and, weird tall thin lineup those two guys yeah it's, it's gonna be the most wild lineup you've ever seen just a, and poku dixon, dixon ticonderoga <laughs> Dude, number they're gonna two throw pencils. a poku Wimbayama holmgren Dude. lineup out there a bunch of seven foot guys who are 170 pounds i'm excited i'm here for it i'm here for it when it does happen but I'm with you. I do think Jalen Williams is value that we can get to. I think Jalen Williams is going to be a guy that we use in our lineups that do have two of these point guards in it, yeah. right? Because how else are we going to get there? We didn't really have much guard value unless the Bulls guys are out. There's not a lot here at shooting guard either. Like if RJ Hampton, you know, stumbles into our lineups, I don't think that's the worst, but it'd have to be in a situation where there's no Jalen Suggs. Like, yeah. They're not starting him, and he played, but he's been good. I mean, 25 and 21 minutes the last two games, 23 and 27 fantasy points, but like kind of limits his ceiling, right? That yeah. we're not really getting a lot of playing time. So I'm with you on Jalen Williams. He is, you know what? I'm ready to say this, Sean. Put him in. Jalen Williams is a top two Jalen Williams in the league. I would say top two Jalen Williams on his team. <laughs> He is number the number one Jalen Williams on his team, and if you guys don't understand what we're talking about, go look at the Thunder roster yeah. and you'll two, you'll two it out Jalen there. Williams spelled differently: one J A L, one J A Y. Yeah, both uh, both drafted this year, both rookies. Both drafted this year. The only other one I would throw out there, just because again, just recent production for him has been pretty has been campaign. Not playing more than yep. twenty minutes, but he's giving you twenty plus fantasy points in three straight. So. I don't uh, like that at all. On a small slate, you kind of need those little dark throws to come through for you. Small forward, Kevin Durant here at 10,200. Again, Durant's having a big night tonight, but we have pretty much correlated that to the fact that Ben Simmons is not there. When Simmons is on the floor, he rebounds, he gets the assists. Tonight, Kevin Durant, the last couple of years, has averaged like seven, seven and a half rebounds per game. He's averaging four this year, right? And that's because Ben Simmons is out there grabbing like eight rebounds a night. So Simmons is off the floor. The counting stats came for Durant tonight, but... You know, be wary of that for, for the Thursday slate here. If everybody's out, though, you have DeRozan by himself against Brooklyn. Yep. DeRozan and Vooch against Brooklyn here. That's going to be probably a pretty chalky play. Yeah, the DeRozan thing is annoying because he was so dominant against the Spurs offensively. Yeah. And had one, one. one rebound, one assist, and one steal. And, like, that just can't happen, right? Yeah. Like, that just cannot happen. But if there's nobody else, like... They are going, the whole offense is going to run through DeRozan and the whole offense is going to run through Vucevic. So yeah. uh, I have no problem getting to DeRozan 85. Yep, I agree with you. Other mid-tier guys, Andrew Wiggins, Franz Wagner, and other guys that we're big fans of here. Wiggins keeps playing pretty well in the last game. Again, only 25 minutes in that game, so I won't hold it against them, but pretty consistent production otherwise. Wagner's been a guy that we've been a big fan of as well. Again, a couple of tough matchups for him, but someone that we still trust most nights here. Yeah, and he was the chalkiest play of the slate two slates ago. When we first saw Point Franz yeah. against Charlotte, and that game just blew out, I think, unfor it was unfortunate for him, right? Like, 
22 fantasy points in 23 minutes. So if he gets us 30 minutes, like who probably gets us 30 fantasy points, yeah. right? So like, like you said, not going to like completely hold it against him. I think this is the matchup. It, this is a good matchup for him against OKC. And we, he is like, if there's no Suggs, like we're going to see him start at point guard again. All right. And they're going to run the biggest lineup in the history of all lineups. And I, if Jonathan Isaac ever returns to this team, <laughs> they're actually able to run like four seven footers on the floor at once is going to be incredible. Um, but I do think Franz is back in play. I do think Wiggins back in play. Neither uh, like Wiggins is not going to be rostered whatsoever. And everyone's going to pivot to Franz in yeah. their spot. So just keep that in mind when you're building your lineup. So I do like Ben Simmons if he's active in this game, by the way. Sure. Uh, okay. Price tag's fine. It's reasonable. And he's 28, 28, 35 is kind of in a ceiling. But he's going to flirt. He should flirt with, you know, triple-ish, double and type numbers. So I'm fine. If you ever get to double, you get the boost there. Bull Bull, for whatever reason, is a small forward power forward on DraftKings. I don't know. understand why the small forward eligibility is there 30 and 27 minutes though man uh, i'm getting you a jersey 16 and 11 <laughs> I, I mean dude i'm buying you a jersey he's legit i'm he's buying like, you a jersey denver you messed know. up denver messed up just like letting <laughs> him go so big mistake there lou Dort played 40 minutes the other night in that ot game i can always just kind of throw some Dort in your lineup that's fine let's see caleb martin's out there but don't love the spot for him any other small forwards for you t sizzle in tournaments Back to a price that, like, I think we can yeah, under five entertain, entertain. I think that's it. Like, Chumo Keki back in the rotation, but not, like, the Charlotte game was because of blowout. Yep. And then at the Dallas game, I don't really know why he played 25 minutes, but, I mean, that's fine. But, like, eh, it's very unreliable. How about this, John? What are your thoughts? Pat Williams played 32 minutes last game, and he hadn't been playing a lot at all. I mean, he hasn't been great at all. Yeah. But he's 3,500. I don't Sean know. Sean Vaughn 30... is my problem for him. If he, he's got to, like, absolutely hit a home run with his yeah. with this counting stats. Or Agreed. Otherwise, like, the numbers just aren't. Agreed. Aren't Agreed. And you know what? I made that rule. I made that rule in our Discord today. I said, I'm not playing zero floor guys. So, you know what? I take it back. I'm with <laughs> you. I said it in our Discord today when someone asked me about PJ Tucker. I said, I'm not playing zero floor guys. And if they beat me... You know, so be it. Sure. PJ Tucker, 13 5, 1 and 1. Like, good for you, PJ Tucker. Like, go you. Yep, I agree. All right, power forward. Again, a lot of guys we've discussed already, but Towns at 8,800, a pretty reasonable price tag for Carl Anthony Towns here. Coming off 50 fantasy points, he's gone for 40 plus in four straight games. So, willing to pay the price for him on a small slate like this against Phoenix, especially no eight Miller against Golden State at 84. Again, a spot I'd be willing to pay for him there. He went for 59 in this spot. He kind of gets up for these kind of games. And then Boncaro there, 7,900 bucks against OKC should be a pretty popular option. Yeah, I mean, one bad game, he's back below 8K. So, yep. you know what to do. And like, bad game by like, he scored 18 points. He just like didn't. Give you the counting stats he usually does. So well, six for and six for twenty. Like he goes if he goes like ten for twenty. Yeah. Right? Or nine for twenty. Like we're talking about a guy who scores you 24, 26 actual points too. You commented on Draymond in these types of games. He did play thirty minutes in that one. Again, he's given you a range of twenty to thirty five fantasy points lately. So if you want to throw him in your lineup, you certainly can. Again, no one's gonna fight you on that. Cam J, Max Struss, these guys are all in that 5K tier. Uh, both of them are fine for me as well. Yeah, I love Cam J. No, Aiton left the Pelicans game. Cam J, 16 points. Yep. Doesn't play in the Houston game. Cam J, 19 and 7. 5 or 11 from 3. I think Cam J is in for big games anytime DeAndre Aiton's not on the floor. Yep. I would argue with that one. And then again, like I said, you can play Max Struss if you want. Basley's played over 20 and 3 straight. Any consideration for him at 41? They may need him just for size, right? Yeah, maybe. And he's been productive in those games, too. Almost three double-doubles. Yeah. So, I don't hate it for tournaments. Right. Center. Bears at 82. Vucevic against Brooklyn. Probably the chalky play there against you know against Brooklyn. Bam against Golden State. Wendell Carter. Where are you? How are you ranking out these center guys? I'm happy that Gobert's price is falling, but I still don't have a ton of interest. Maybe just in tournaments, just given we're going to see Bismack and Jock Lan Landell. We got a ceiling um, game though. Twenty points, twenty-one rebounds out against we the did, Lakers. We did. Every so often, we you know, there's a full moon and we get the Go Bear game. So I, I don't hate it. I do think Vucevic is going to be popular. I think Bam is going to be popular. I played Bam in this spot against Golden State the other night. I loved it, and I, I'm going to go right back to it. Golden State is just oozing fantasy points to front court. 
Right. And Bam fouled out last game. Like, who knows what could have happened if that if he doesn't fall out. Like, maybe he plays a couple more minutes. And so I'd be willing to go back to Bam 74. I actually think if Levine plays, the chalk is Bam. Okay. I think the roster ship would shift to his direction. And if he doesn't, we pro- you're probably right. It's probably Vucevic. So I think depending on the Levine news is probably depending is probably where the ownership. Okay. Do you have an opinion on Viambo versus Landale? Yeah, I think Landale is better. Okay. He is a better fantasy playing per minute guy. He's actually good offensively too. And this was his the case in Australia where he played. This was the case San in San Antonio where he was last year. Like he's just a really good fantasy point per minute guy. Whereas like Bismack we know can be like really stale offensively. Like he can. It took one shot against Houston. <laughs> I mean, it's just like again, zero floor guy. Like he can rebound and he can block shots, and he does have the uh, ability to like score because he's very active. Like he can put the ball back, yeah. like he put backs and stuff. But like I just, it just feels like Landell is a better fantasy player per minute guy. And even if he doesn't start, like the start of Bismack, you know, you know what's gonna happen, right? Sure. I see the future here, John. Yeah. Bismack gets Bismack has the starts. Everyone plays him. No one plays Landell the other day. Landell or Bismack gets in foul trouble. Landell comes in, yeah. dominates. It's going to be the complete opposite. Bismack's going to start. Everyone's going to play Landell. Yeah. And Bismack's, Bismack's, going, to give us a double Bismack's going to go for 50. Yeah. yeah. So writing's on the wall, but I still think Landell is the better of the two guys. Any value centers for you? Landell 5K. Yeah, uh, I agree. I'm just saying if there's anybody else that maybe would pop off for you. It's just hard to like, like if we get Wiseman foul trouble, like Looney could be in play or if we get Looney, mm-hmm. Looney's been kind of good the last couple games. So like, you know, Kavon Looney could be a guy. Sure. Other than that though, no, right? Yeah. I, I don't see no, it. If I you agree. see yeah, something. I'm making sure that we were kind of on the same page. I mean, Looney, a lot of rebounds, right? It just rebounds basketball, yep. so. Yep. Also assists, you know, it gives you assists. True, that is, that's the, uh, that's the John Pemba special right there yeah. that I'm sure no, not no, a lot of people... Yes, he went under the last game. He only had two, so he had... He had oh, three. what is he thinking, dude? I had four a, b- a billion other times. All right, let's make our lineup. I already plugged Jalen Williams in at shooting guard. Are we going SGA at point guard or Irving? I think we, I think SGA gets the nod probably considering it's the back-to-back for okay. Brooklyn, right? Is that your, do you that's agree fine. there? Or yeah, is it... no, that's fine. Do you want to use Booker as a guard utility or just stick with Jalen Williams for now? We're going to, if we're going to use Booker, let's keep him in the util because that's the 10 p.m. game. We'll be able to adjust if like something happens Okay. To, where Devin Booker's like not playing randomly or whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah, we'll see if there's, if there's even any uh, value there come time to finish out these lineups. A small forward play. Or so I think I was, I might be getting ahead of myself. Jalen Williams can play small forward too, by the way. We can move around if we want. We didn't like, we didn't really like shooting guard, right? Unless we were playing Devin Booker. Correct. It was Jalen Williams or Devin Booker. So I was thinking for power forward, we play Cam Johnson or we could play him in the forward spot. I feel like he provides like pretty good value Yeah, for I wanted us. to play Apollo probably a power forward. Okay. Then do, can we do... We, we can do, do Cam at forward. Cam at the forward spot. I feel like that's... Yeah, that's fine. Cam Johnson at 54. Let's see. So we're gonna run out. We may have to move off of Booker here because I put I threw Bam in at center. Okay. Um, we. I mean, I'm okay with. I'm perfectly fine not playing. Sure. Him. Do you want to go Wiggins at 69, or Franz at 65, or Bull Bull at 57? Is this small for small forward? Yeah. So what do we have? We have SGA, Jalen Williams at point guard, shooting guard. We have Bam at center. We have Cam J at forward, and you have Ben Ben Caro at power forward. Correct. And so 53-33 is where we are, right? Is that where you are as well? A 53-33, yeah. Okay. We could not go th- Bam and go DeRozan. What are your thoughts? What do you think? I mean, Obviously, I like DeRozan a lot. But and there's... would the pivot be to Jock yeah, at we'd, center? Yeah, we'd have to play Landale. Do you want to just experiment with that? We'll do it's, Jock at center it's, it's 5K and DeRozan. 5K pretty much in position for guarding utility at that point. Here's just the thing, and this is what we talk about, like, like we can't like building with DeRozan is tough now because we don't know if the Bulls guys are out. Like right. they're just questionable. So like I feel better about not using him. Okay. Just because we're not playing like we're not playing DeRozan if Levine's in, right? Okay. At eighty five. Like yep. that's just too it's just not something we can get to. Right. I'll move Cam Johnson into small forward. Okay. And then I think he's only power. I think he's only oh, power, right. forward. power forward. Only. Okay, so back to forward he goes then. <laughs> Sorry, Cam. I wanted you to have a position to don't play. I know. 
Everybody else has multi positions except for you. You could always the handy dandy Fandle is always an option sure. for you, John. Fifty three hundred small forward guard. Let's see what do we got at guard. Maybe we'll we can maybe come back to the. Uh... Yep. There's not ton like Clay Thompson is he played twenty nine minutes against Miami. I had twenty five actual twenty five fantasy points for them there. Would you play Landell at Util as well? Sure. Would you like yeah, the two like, Phoenix I like, guys? Yeah, I like Jacques fine at, at Util. Fifty five hundred. We could go Jalen Suggs at guard if you wanted to, assuming he played. Assuming he plays, that we just don't know the like. We could. Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry. Want to see what Lowry does for us? You and like ben, Lowry, too, right? Ben Simmons at 64 as a small forward. Yeah, I mean, that would actually give us someone that we'd be willing to use at small forward. Yep. And then that'd be $4,600 for a guard, which would be Caruso or Campaign. It's a, it's one of those two because. Or Dragic if everybody's out at <laughs> 3300 Yeah, or Dragic, yeah. We can, I mean, Simmons can also fit it as a guard, and we would have 46 for a small forward, which would be Aaron Wiggins. Aaron Wiggins still played a lot of minutes, 27 minutes. 27. Still not, like, the greatest of spots for him there. Yeah, it's, and again, we don't know, like, I, I feel like his minutes are, like, so on the fence, sure. maybe. Is that, do you agree with that? Yeah, like, I, we, no, no, I do. I uh, don't know if we could trust his minutes. So we go back to Kyle Lowry. It's a $4,900 small forward, which is Royce O'Neal. It's Caleb Martin. It's Tyson Ross. It, look, it, Royce O'Neal's been... Royce O'Neal's... He's been good tonight, I guess. <laughs> he did. He gives you 20 fantasy points every night. Like, yeah, on a four-game slate, there's a floor. Or a solid floor for him. Yeah, I'd be, uh, I don't that's know why fine. you hate so much. Guys, I, I don't... He's just like... I sh Look, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Just saying. I'm coming... I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. You're right. You're right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's see. So if we did that, or if we did... Wiggins is more expensive than he was. Bull Bull's 57. If we do Bull Bull, we have a $5,300 guard, which is... Over over Ben Simmons? Yeah. I mean, Bull Bull is, like, just, like, But But like, does his role change with Suggs back, though? Does he go to the bench, probably? He could. I mean, they most likely start Suggs, right? I can't see a scenario where they maybe don't because just they're using they're using franz wagner as their point guard like right. that's not gonna stay that's not gonna nope. continue or at least i don't think at least i don't think it's gonna continue right i wouldn't think so would you rather suggs or lowry or or simmons i like lowry i kind of like kyle lowry dude okay is that crazy no, like is no, it no, kyle no one's gonna play him. no one's gonna play him right. what do we got then hundred dollars left over we have sga Jalen Williams at shooting guard, Royce O'Neal at small forward, Paolo Benchcaro at power forward, Bam at center, Kyle Lowry at guard, Cam Johnson at forward, and Jock Lindale at utility. But 100 bucks left over. That is the lineup for your four game slate on DraftKings. I believe Brian Kirksey has a playbook for Tuesday. Uh, if you have any questions, get us in the Discord. Any final thoughts here, James, for anybody? No, again, this lineup that we're building is an example lineup, you know, Take it for what it is, what we're building the night prior. Things change. But again, it's the process. Like, these are spots that we like and all that. So, you know, take all these plays with a grain of salt. We'll see what happens, like, throughout the day. But if anything changes, just come into the Discord. We are talking basketball all day long. Yep. 24-7. You'll see our process played out. Ryan Kirksey's playbook in the value, the new value video that you can catch on our YouTube channel yep. along with this podcast you know, depending on what platform you listen to. So, you know, take everything we say now and then apply it to the process throughout the day as more things play out. And uh, yeah, let's keep being successful and having a big night. Sean. Yep. I right, guess we'll be back for the podcast live stream for Wednesday's large slate. Again, get us in Discord if you have any questions and we'll talk to you guys later.